Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, into your homes, onto your phones, into your world, into your space. Welcome to my channel. Um, just a little bit about myself. I'm born in the UK, um, lived here all my life, but I did spend a stint of 11 years in the United States, New York, um, and I spent some time in New York, New Jersey. Yeah, that's about it. And I spent a year in Angola. Um, on a peacekeeping mission and um, yeah so I tend to talk about because I've had those kind of affiliations I tend to talk about topics that affect the UK, Jamaica where my parents are from, US of A and sometimes Africa so that is the reason why I kind of talk about th these different topics because spending time in those countries you kind of grow you have a kind of affinity with the country. Anyway, today it's a Jamaican, well, I don't even know if it's a Jamaican, it's a Jamaican lady who has, who's in Paris in France. She stopped by a window where she's seen a black mannequin in the window. It's a men's shop and she feels, as she says, the guy resembles a boy who was murdered on the um, basketball court and they took out his kidney. And then I thought to myself, bloody hell, I wonder if they're kind of, there's a, there's over 10,000 illegal kidney transplants going on every year. And I was wondering, I wonder if they're taking out people's kidneys and somehow preserving the bodies of the people who die and making them into mannequins. I just don't think, it. I don't think it'd be cost effective for them to do that. Um, when I saw the image, you know when they have those entertainers and they stand like this? And you think that they're statues. And then when you touch them, they, they do something. Well, I thought that was what that was what this lady had seen. But she said she actually went into the shop and they told her they'd made the mannequin. So I'm going to show you. What? He looks like a very nice looking young boy. Um, oh, hold on a minute. I thought I was it. I thought I was up and ready, but I'm not as usual. Um, let me see, where am I? Boy, look like somebody dead. I'm bummed. Look hold at on. his hand. Um, hold on. Let's stop. Okay, people, tell me something. So, this is a store in Paris. That's this is a man's store in Paris, and this is a, a um, mannequin that they say that they made this shit <laughs> and put this in the store. This boy look like somebody dead and bound. Look at his hand. Wait, I'm doing it through the hole. Look at the boy's hands. You can't really see the hands clearly his on hands, this. His hands is as real as mine. This is friggin' serious, I swear. If anybody have this guy missing. <laughs> if anybody have this guy missing, please. This is crazy. I've never seen anybody look so freaking real. How if I have this man in a store sit on? Look. Look at that shit. You see? This, this is freaking crazy. Look at the, look at the guy eye. And them said they made this mannequin. And put clothes on him and have him sit down in the window. Look at the guy friggin' face. This look like the friggin' guy who was in the, um, in the school, um, basketball court inside the school where them kill and take out him kidney. I swear to God. No guys. This, he's in Paris. If you know anyone that missing a black son, look like this. He's in Paris in the store in the window. Yeah, it's kind of spooky, isn't it? Especially when, like I said, you know, there is so much um, illegal um, organ trafficking. And it's making 32 billion a year. You've got people, even in Jamaica... You know, recruiting people to sell their organs and people who are desperate for money are selling their organs. But there was one boy, I think he was 18, and he's bedridden. He sold his organ on the black market because he wanted an iPad. 
the latest iPad or Apple something or other. So he sold his organ, his liver. No, not his liver, his kidney. And now he's bedridden with tubes coming all over the place. Andy Cole, basketball player. He can't believe he can't play football anymore. I don't, I don't know if it's football or basketball. Anyway, he can't play anymore and he is devastated. His life, he reckons his life is ruined and sometimes he feels like taking his life. He's taken it so badly. So it's not no dibby dibby thing when people say, oh, you know, you, you don't really need it. You don't really need that organ. I can give you 200,000 Jamaican dollars. It might sound like a lot of money, but your life is more important. And your th those organs are in your body to perform a function. They're not superfluous. And there are certain situations when you can do, you know, if you've got a really close relative, like a family member, your child or your or your um, mother or your parent, and you feel that you would take your risk or you don't mind being disabled for the rest of your life, if it comes to that, then that's different. But if you're going to sell your kidney and think, OK, I'm going to get 200,000 for it, Jamaican dollars, and then you think, oh, yeah, I'm going to live my life as normal. And I saw it go. It doesn't work like that. So even when you're desperate, peeps, just be careful. They're always finding a way to find vulnerable people and especially children. They're, um, you know, getting, you know, soliciting children to give away their organs. And the thing is, not all of them are even transplantable. You could have wasted your life, be bedridden, and they can't even use your kidney. Apparently, the kidneys that they use in France, they don't use them in the US of A. US um, destroyed 20,000 kidneys. They discarded 20,000 kidneys because they reckon they weren't good enough, even though there's 100,000 people waiting for a kidney transplant in America. They still discarded 20,000. I don't know what's wrong with the kidneys, but you cannot assume that just because you're going to donate a kidney is going to save a life and feel as though you're doing something good. That is not the way it is. So it's not, I'm talking about kidneys only because she mentioned kidneys in that in that video, but it could be, what else do they try to get you to give out? Oh, I don't even know. I can't even think what they try to ask you to um, sell, but there's all different parts of your body. They ask you to sell and say it's not going to make a difference. Like, just remember, say it. Your body was made uniquely with all the organs in it for you to function properly. And that's why when you abuse your body and you can get um, cirrhosis of the liver, you can get lung cancer, you can get kidney failure because things ain't working. It's because usually it's because of abuse if it's not hereditary. So it's not for you to say, oh, yeah, well, I've got two livers I'm, or I'm going to get rid of one or I've got two kidneys. I'm going to get rid of one or I've got two eyes. I'm going to sell one. It doesn't work like that. So um, I think they're raking it in, like I said, 32 billion. Um, Dr. Lawson Douglas successfully carried out the first kidney transplant in Jamaica. That was over 50 years ago. And technically, that should be like a normal procedure now. But, you know, it's been stymied. And I bet it's money. You know, that should be a mainstream operation in Jamaica. 50 years ago, he performed the first successful kidney transplant. And a lot of times they said they got more than competent doctors in Jamaica who can perform kidney transplants, but they haven't got transplantable kidneys. So don't think that your kidney, just because you're going to sell it, is going to help somebody to live, because it may not. And I think, um, I think I'm going to stop it there, actually. Yeah, I think I'm going to stop it there. So I'm going to, that boy, I don't know if you recognise him. If you recognise him, let me know. If um, if you have the name of the boy who that lady was referring to, the boy who died on the um, basketball, you know, and they had his kidney removed. If you know who that is, that would be helpful. Because, you know, I do try to look up and I looked up um, realistic mannequins in in 
the world, um, realistic mannequins in Man in um, Paris. I looked up the boy who lost his kidney on a, on a basketball pitch. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find anything to support what might have been um, what that lady was saying. But, you know, sometimes these, um, you know, it's so obscure. You know, I'm sure there's somebody out there who might know who she was referring to. And it'd be interesting to know if you think he looks like the picture um, that I put on my post. But yeah, and when people go missing and you don't know where they are, you don't even know whether or not it's because they, they're victims of these organ transplants that have gone wrong. So just warn people in your homes, in your families, friends, relatives, whoever, warn them against it. Let them know the dangers, especially there's so many backstreet um, kidney trials. You know, like I said, 10,000 illegal transplants every year in Jamaica. So you have to be careful. Was it in Jamaica? Yeah, I believe it was. So you have to be careful. You don't even know who you're going to. And you think you're doing somebody a favour and you're just putting your life at risk. So just warn people who may be poor, who may feel as though it's a good idea. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.